Hello and welcome to five minute tutorials on RF Pro. In the next few videos, we will talk about RF PCB analysis with RF Pro. This is the first video in analyzing RF PCB. And in this video, we will cover the basics. Now, before we start, remember one, two, three, subscribe to the channel, enable notifications, like and share the video with your friends and colleagues. All right, let's go ahead and spend a few minutes in getting started with RF PCB analysis. Now to illustrate the concept, I have imported a Cadence BRD file into ADS workspace. Now, if you want to know how to import uh, external uh, board file into ADS for EM analysis, you can go to file import design and then select what kind of design you have. Usually ODB is a neutral format and almost all PCB tools would allow you to export ODB file and same can be imported. Again, for both of these, I have uh, separate videos on my YouTube channel, which you can refer and then bring the design over. Once the design is inside ADS, first thing you should do is look at the stack up. And in this stack up, uh, more often than not, you will find the properties in terms of physical a dimension as well as the electrical property may not be proper. If so, make sure you edit those properties in ADS and make the stack up as accurate as possible in consultation with your fab house. Now, once that is done, uh, we can go ahead and proceed for RF Pro analysis. So here I have opened RF Pro with the same board file. And when you have these kind of RF board file, they are pretty multi-layer and pretty complex design. So full EM analysis is usually not used for these designs. You typically use user-defined EM analysis, select the desired nets which you want to analyze and go ahead and perform simulation. And that's what we are going to do here. Now, to get you started, we can go ahead and select the net. And in our case, let's select the clock net. So here is a clock net which I would like to analyze. So we can drag and drop it into the analysis. And then also we can bring over the ground net for our design. Now, if you have more nets to be analyzed, feel free to keep adding as many as you want. Now, once the net is added into analysis, notice the icon is blue, which means it's an undefined net. So the first thing I would recommend you to right click and set it as signal. The advantage when you do that is now when you right click, once the net is defined as signal, you right click, you see this option here called create ports. So this way, when you click on that, it will, it will identify the components which your net is connected with. So in this case, you can see on one side, it is connected to P1, which is this connector, and the action is create port, which is what we want. And on the other side, it is connecting to two of the resistor components, and the default action is connect a component. We can change that to create a port there as well. So now we will have the terminations placed at both ends of the trace as we want. Click OK, and now you can see three ports getting created. Now each of these ports will come up with their default plus and minus option. And if you don't like the way negative pin is placed, we can change it and we can create our own virtual pin if you want at your desired location or you could simply select all of them, right click and select create and use virtual pin on nearby ground net. This way it will find the nearest ground net and place the negative pin and make that pairing for you. As you can see right now, it is making, it is referring to the bottom layer, which is currently the third layer. And you can see all those details by opening the virtual pin, double clicking on any of the virtual pin and you can see on which layer the pin got placed. And similarly, you can keep moving on and you can see the respective layer. And that's the closest ground net uh, which tool has found. And that usually 99.9% .9 of the time is correct. But of course, you have the flexibility to change and place the negative pin at your own desired location as we have covered in one of the earlier videos on virtual pin. Now, once you have the port, you have the net, the next thing you would like to do is go to options Set the frequency sweep, select the simulator to be either FEM or momentum. If for these kind of RF uh, traces, I typically prefer to use FEM because actually it's faster than using a traditional method of moments. But if your nets are uh, you know, uh, scattered throughout the board, it might get tricky to use FEM 
due to the RAM uh, requirement. Now, depending upon whether you use momentum or FEM, you can click on this icon here. Make sure you select the meshing generation to be two and mesh domain optimization is switched on. That way, you will have the latest measure and also the ground size will be constrained to the only the required portion because remember you're only simulating a small portion of the design. Now another critical decision which you need to take. So let me hide all the conductors, right click and highlight the portion to look at the net which we are analyzing. Notice uh, for in these kind of typical RF boards, you will have this kind of via which will have a lot of um, non-functional VIA pads included. Now, sometime in your PCB fabrication, you will have these pads. If so, you can go ahead and simulate the design now. But in case in your actual PCB, you will not have these non-functional VIA pads. You don't want to include them while doing EM analysis because the results will be different as these pads will add uh, capacitance to your VIAs, distorting the performance. So if you do not want to include them in your simulation, option is very simple. Right click on the layout um, you know, object here, select the unconnected pad removal option and enable the removal of unconnected pads. Once you do that, and now if you try to highlight the section, you can see there are no non-functional VR pads included. And now if you perform simulation, it will be plain VRs with no unused pass. How simple it is. And tool lets you do that in one click instead of you going and modifying your layout. Your layout remains as it is. All right, so once it is done, we can go ahead and run simulation. Now, because this analysis, as you can see, is a pretty long trace, there's a 10 layer you know, uh, stack up, it will take some time. So I already have performed simulation here in RF Pro. One analysis was done by including the non-functional VIA pads. The second analysis was without non-functional VIA pads. And we can compare the results by selecting both of these analysis. Right click, show the S parameter results. And here you can see the difference between two simulations. The red trace is including the non-functional VIA pads. The gray trace is without uh, the non-functional VIA pads. And you can see the insertion loss is lower in case of um, not having those ex you know, extra VIA pads, which adds capacitance to your the VIA designs. All right, so this hopefully uh, get you started with our RF Pro for PCBs. In the next couple of videos, we will talk about little more advanced topics and you will understand how to handle component models, S parameter files, and a um, few other things. Stay tuned for those videos and thanks for watching. Wish you all the best in your design process.